welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Welcome to this edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers Comments. Let's get into it. First comment comes from someone named Psychological Sigma, and they say, didn't the police officers of olden day wear a badge that said slave catcher? Now this comment is on a short video that I did where I describe an experience I had participating in the chat of a Freemasons live stream. There are actually six Freemasons on there. And then this individual starts talking about police officers. So it sounds as though psychological stigma has cops on the brain. And then they said, cops can also lie to do their job. Many of them are linked up. Again, psychological stigma talking about cops, something that has nothing to do <laughs> with the subject matter of the short video I posted. So I offer them this, psychological stigma. Cops don't take an oath to tell the truth. How else would they infiltrate pedophile rings and human traffic trafficking rings and catch rapists and drug dealers and things like that? Uh, are they just going to walk in with their badge and their, their uniform and be like, I'm here to take down the pedophiles. Here we are. No, that's logic. Okay. Now think about this also. Psych psychological sigma. When you were born and you came out into this now space, did your mother say, hey, that's psychological sigma? And then they put that on your fiction certificate of live birth? Next comment comes from colon husky period and they say, I'm more surprised that six masons were on TikTok. And I said, there are many masons on TikTok. They are recruiting. And that is true. If you go on to TikTok and you go and type in Freemasons, there are dozens and dozens of Freemasons on there, and they have followers like you wouldn't believe, subscribers like you wouldn't believe. And it's my perception that they are recruiting on there. They're marketing the Brotherhood. And they are really, literally, giving away a lot of uh, knowledge, basic knowledge about Freemasonry. But again, I mean, if you want to learn about Freemasonry, it would be up to you to take those steps to do that. But anybody who talks about Freemasonry and acts like they know what goes on in the lodges and things and they are not a Mason, they're navigating on presumption assumption. Next comment comes from Stefan Schmidt. Thank you for the membership, Stefan. And they say, thank you, Jason. You're one of the very, very fine people making YouTube videos where I can give my thumbs up before even listening to and proofing your videos. So Stephen, hits the thumbs up before they even watch the video. Thank you. And until today, I never had to correct that decision after seeing your videos. And until today, he didn't have to correct that. So Stephen's saying that before he watched my video, he hit the thumbs up. And then when he was done watching the video, he voided that thumbs up. For me, that's an outstanding fact of quality. Wow. That is the most clever hidden diss I've ever seen on the internet. Stefan just dissed me. That's, that's pretty funny. 
Thank you for your correctness and for your gifts. You're very welcome. And thank you for your membership, all the likes that you gave me before watching the video, but no thank you for the voiding of the thumb. That hurts, man. Another one from Stefan. He says, P.S. I've tried to learn crux and structure from David Wynn Miller and with Mark, lowercase k, Kishon Christopher. And I appreciated all that, but I was always left with some doubts and some unanswered questions. Well, it's no wonder that you were because Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller passed away in the summer of 2018. And Mark, lowercase k, does not teach correct sentence structure or syntax. I've never seen him actually... Uh, have the capacity to perform in either of those venues. He can parse, that's for sure, but I've never seen him write a correct sentence structure, and I've certainly never seen him syntax an entire sentence or paragraph at one time without help, without outside help. Uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Trust and Us, and they say, I can't speak on it, but I know a something about it. It's too dangerous for me, honestly. Mind blown emoji. And uh, that's a comment on the post that I made about the vowel in front of a consonant. The beginning of a word means no. Then how can we use words like of, is, are, and, and or in correct sentence structure? Well, if you watch my correct sentence structure playlist, I certainly give closure to that multiple times in, within the videos in that playlist. But this individual is saying, he knows something about it, but he can't speak on it. It's too dangerous for, for them. That is hilarious. I've been doing this for five or six years, and there's literally been zero danger as far as my daily navigations. You know, I was expecting, oh, the CIA and the FBI and everybody's going to be following me around and blah, 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 blah. Nothing like that has ever happened. If, if anything... They don't want anything to do with me. And sometimes it's like pulling teeth when I have to talk to some of them. I don't know what this individual's correct sentence structure knowledge level is, but it must be very high if it's too dangerous for them. Now this next series of comments, uh, I'd like you to pay particularly close attention to uh, because it's something that I do run into from time to time where I will get someone who is a former student or client of Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller, and they usually come on with the, using the fact that they learned from David Wynn Miller as some sort of um, indicator of their knowledge level, which it is, but not in the way they think it is, at least for me. And they will come on saying that they've been through the foreign vessel and dry dock system. They've been beaten around. They've been battered around. They've been abused. You know, and, and all these very negative experiences with the, the fiction system. And, you know, what can you really say to someone who shares stories like that? Like RJG sharing his stories in those seminars. What, what, what can you say to that? I mean, am I going to say prove it? Show me the video evidence? Show me the medical records? Or do we just take your word for it? Did these things really happen or they didn't? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that some individual is sharing their story with me, and I respect that. Uh, with the balance of honor and grace, I give them the platform to do that here, which is what I'm doing here. And I'm going to read the comments, and then just I'm going to read what they wrote, and then share Kuliana and knowledge cultivation, always through the lens of correct sentence structure. Never anything personal. Their initial comment in this series was a comment on the same uh, post that I was just talking about, about the vowel in front of a consonant, meaning no, etc., etc. And they said, this has bothered me from the jump. In the original 900 in DWM book, I found issues like also. Issues like also. I think they mean the word also. From the question, I'm guessing that you figured it out. Um, as far as figuring it out, I got closure on it uh, a few years ago, actually. And if you go back through my videos, you will see some of them that give closure to this are three or four years old. I will have to take a crash course on your channel again. So, 
Stephen is telling me that he's already seen all the videos on my channel, but he's going to have to watch them again. You may have the answer, but I would also like a breakdown as to why and how you graph the sentences and what mathematical interface means in PSG context. Now, what does he mean by PSG? I'd have to guess he means parse syntax grammar, which is different than correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. Parse syntax grammar means parse syntax and grammar. Correct sentence structure communication is not in that uh, abbreviation. So I have to think that they mean something different than what I teach. As far as mathematical interface means in correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar, I've done multiple videos on that, and I think I shared a link with you to the most recent one. You just have to take the time to study it. In graphing the sentences, I do that over and over and over and over again in my correct sentence structure playlist if you want to take the time to study that. You're the best I've seen at grammar. You truly are top class at it. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you for all the years of dedication. You're very welcome. Next comment. Um... They say, thank you for the offer. I offered them a workshop. I offered them a consultation. He said, at this time, I'm not in the state of mind for a workshop. I love and live the PSG, but I learned my lessons in this field of study through hard knocks. If you love and live the PSG, okay. Again, that's PSG is minus the CSSC. Grammar lessons get my heart rate up due to the situation where I went to court and only spoke in our language. The whole story is a cautionary tale to most people, but a badge of my relentless honor to myself. Thank you for the offer, but I'm going to decline it for now. So they credential themselves with a badge of relentless honor. I myself usually leave it to other people that I interact with to credential me as to whether I'm honorable or graceful or humble. It's not up to me to say those things in true cultivation of humility. Um, I just thought I'd point that out so we can get a sense of an individual's character by the words that they use to convey um, to, or articulate their meanings. I will be checking out the link you sent. I also noticed my own issues with DWM and do have a style of writing that you may or may not use already. I am not up to date on your progress with our language. There is only one uh, method of writing correct sentence structure, Stephen. Now, while people do develop their own styles, they have to have a correct foundation first in order to do that. And if you learn the grammar incorrectly and you develop erroneous habits, and then anything you create is going to have errors all over it if you don't learn the basics with correctness. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about how he uses the grammar and his sentences are 13 paragraphs or 13 sentences long. He talks about lining the sentences up. And the sentence is now a seven. It's one reality. I don't really know what they're talking about there about as far as lining it up with justification. The only thing I can say about that is if you want to write a correct sentence structure document, everything would be left justified. Nothing would be centered unless you give closures to the reason why you're breaking continuance of the evidence to center something or to left and right justify it. Uh, try to indicate my verb, which is the only existing balance of the paragraph. My two sentences always use the now time and purpose of the paragraph is to place the paragraph in the now time. Well, actually, the way that I do things, Stephen, now time now is non-tangible contract, and time doesn't exist. I use the word continuum for that, but that's me. I think that my method of communication when using our language and my style will qualify to be considered a reasonable attempt. Therefore, it becomes the job of the judge and jury to fix any errors. That is not true, Stephen, because now you are giving jurisdiction to someone else over your construct. With correct sentence structure, you have to know it so well that you are the judge of that document contract postal vessel court venue. You are the authority. See, the, what you're talking about here is really giving me a background as to why things happen the way they happen. Because you just said you are giving away jurisdiction to the judge and jury. 
it's up to the judge and jury to fix any errors. That is definitely not true. All right? Simply because you are imposing on someone else rather than taking accountability for what you are presenting. Now, we're going to go into that in the next one. Um, you're either a student or you're a master. If I have a problem, a serious, critical problem that requires a physicist, am I going to go onto a college campus and grab a student of physics? Or am I going to go find a professor? Am I going to go find a master? Students have no cred, okay? As compared to the master. Next comment. Thank you for your feedback. I will respond to you point by point. David Wynn Miller personally wrote all my documents. To me, again, you saying that means that David has jurisdiction, is the authority and author of your documents. Because he wrote it, he's the author and authority. If you don't have closure on what he wrote, then you have no jurisdiction and you have no standing. You have no position. Number one. Number two, Saying that David Wynn Miller wrote all your documents at this point is just another piece of evidence in the long chain of a continuance of the evidence that you're sharing that show me why things turned out the way they did in the stories that you share. I paid him 15 grand for the pleasure. I was tortured for four years because I used this in a court and only spoke this language to everyone, including the court. Again. There are a lot of things lining up showing me why things happen the way they happen for you. My extreme torture is well documented. There are YouTube videos that date back to that time that my family had to make a plea for my life. It was witnessed by over 50 people who swore under oath to their testimony. Well, now Stephen is claiming that there's video proof out there of this happening and record of it. But yet... He has not shared one bit of it here with me anywhere. He hasn't emailed me with a link to a video. He hasn't shared a link in the comments. Um, so the burden of proof is on the claimant. For the proof of the claim is with the claimant. Uh, he would need to provide that if he wants to add certification to what he's saying. Because otherwise, we just have to take him at his word, right? I was waterboarded, hung upside down, dipped in hot and cold water. I was beaten daily. I refused to enter court on my own, so I was bloody and electrodes sticking out of my body for every court appearance. Walk the walk and live the life. And I can definitely see some probabilities and possibilities as to why you had to live that life. I bleed for this cause, and it was all over pot. Pot that wasn't in my car or bag. Pot that the man who pot it was went to my so-called trial and told the court that it was his. I went through all of that innocent of any crime. So when I hear you point your point about the correctness of my documents, I want you to remember I got the best of the best at the time to do them for me. And I had to learn to use this while having my mail snuck to me by other people. Also in the United States, the judges as a fiduciary responsibility to uphold the truth. I see what apparently seem to be several assumptions and presumptions in what Stephen is saying here. Number one, he's assuming that David Wynn Miller was the best of the best. Okay? If David had any real power or potency then why did any of this happen at all? Okay? I mean, if he was the author of your documents that you paid him 15 grand to do, was he standing there next to you explaining the document that he authored? Because if you walk into a court, if you walk into an English-speaking court as a contract party and you speak Russian, what happens? The court gets an interpreter so that a communication plane can be established. If you walk into court court using correct sentence structure or your best knowledge of what you think correct sentence structure is, and they don't understand it, then you have to provide an interpreter. It only makes sense. 
It's not up to them to learn it. It's up to you if you are presenting a quo or whatever it is. But then again, this is so convoluted because you aren't the authority of the document. David was. David was <laughs> had jurisdiction over it. And if he wasn't there holding his jurisdiction and position and helping you, well then, no wonder. And even if he was there to help you, as far as the grammar and everything goes, I mean, volition is the most important thing in writing a, a correct sentence structure document if you have correct volition. But then again, I don't know the ins and outs of your case. I only have your word here. And I don't even really know you. And I never take anyone at their word. There must be certification and evidence. I'm not sure I understand your claim because the core rental I paid David Wood Miller to do and be the jurisdiction judge on it is the court of which I seek to bring to closure, but no one seems to have a bank or venue in which to settle the claim. Oh, one other thing. They're saying that it's the judge is the fiduciary responsibility to uphold the truth. You can't tell someone else what it is their responsibility to do. One may only make a claim for themselves. If you would have done this, in a style of correct sentence structure where you were the author of the document. You authored it. You authorized it. You give you have closure in all the terms and conditions of your document contract court uh, postal vessel court venue. You are the judge. There is no other judge because you're taking that flag of the land during the time of the contract into the well of the court, leveling the field of contract with you taking jurisdiction over it, inviting anyone else to come on to that geometric level playing field and participate with the facts because you're the interpreter and you're there to teach it so that everyone can be equal rule one rule equal if you're sitting there giving them the authority then i can see why things happened the way that they happened there are lots of other things that go into it but i can really really see i'm getting a very clear picture of of some potential reasons why things happen the way they happen to you. I fully hear and see your point. However, no one can point to an actual venue that could settle it. There was no valid reason for me to go through what I went through. If you claim that my quo rento was invalid, that you claim I was foolish and swindled. Um, no, that's not what I'm claiming at all. Um, what I'm claiming, the only thing I'm claiming, is that the quo rental was incorrect grammatically. As far as the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, yes, it is not correct sentence structure. There are dozens of errors all over it. I can guarantee it. Now, as to whether you were foolish or swindled, that's up to your position, however you feel about it. One thing that I try to teach is humility. If you don't know what you don't know, how do you know? If you don't know anything about the grammar, which you said you didn't when you hired David Wynn Miller, there is no way that someone can just, if they don't know anything about it, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to learn it in a week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or a month. It's very unlikely, especially given that in that book, that David Wynn Miller published, there are mistakes over every single page, multiple, multiple, multiple errors. So not only are you trying to learn something that's difficult, but you're learning something that's convoluted and has errors all over it. So your foundation is not going to be rock solid. These are just logical points that I'm making, nothing personal towards you, Stephen, or whether you were swindled or not swindled. The facts are the facts. And the fact is, I guarantee your quo rental complaint has errors all over it. If that is your position, then I feel sorry for you because I know I would be bothered to the core to hear someone make my claims and respond with an argument stemming from denial of good faith. What is good faith? You're talking about faith like people have faith in God and things like that? Because if that's the case, it has no place here and no valid uh, position in fact. Uh, to feel sorry for me is like the equivalent of saying, oh, I'll pray for you. It's very condescending. And 
Again, if you couple that with, and I'm trying to teach some psychological knowledge cultivation and vetting people, if you couple that with what the individual said earlier about he has a relentless honor, so he thinks he has a very high opinion of himself, honor-wise, a lot of pride, and then he feels sorry for me, so now he's condescending me uh, based upon an assumption that I'm saying that I'm claiming he was foolish and swindled, which I'm not at all. My only claim is that the grammar on his quarterental is incorrect. That's it. The rest of it is his assumption, which would appear that he's taking what I'm saying very personally, which, as I make the claim in just about every video, it's not a good deal to, to take things personal like that when I'm talking about things on a grammatical level. Your position fosters a lack of mutual understanding of the situation of the bigger picture. Well, no kidding, because I don't, all I have is your word. You haven't provided one single shred of video evidence that you say exists as far as your court proceedings and things like that. Not one. All I have is your word, and I definitely do not take the word of someone I don't know personally. How could I ever tell a man who stands up and takes my cause to the extreme that I did that all his efforts, pain, and suffering are worthless in the eyes of the very cause he fought for? Never said that either, Stephen. Really going off into left field here by my perception. If I thought a child, that concept wouldn't be able to live with myself. If I thought a child, that concept, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. I have no idea what that means. It is like claiming a POW doesn't deserve to revive medical aid or remedies or VA because he filled the wrong forms while being a POW during the war, which made the country exist. Yeah, you're really going off into left field assumption presumption here and uh, really getting away from the facts of the grammar. Fact is, <coughs> fact is, your quo rental that David w. Miller wrote has errors all over it. That is my claim. Has nothing to do with POWs or children. Further, there isn't even an office to file the correct forms in. Again, this displays your lack of knowledge, especially of postal mechanics here, in taking authority and jurisdiction over your own construct. If there isn't an office, i.e. station, then it's up to you to create one if you want one. You can't sit around and wait for people to do things for you with this stuff. In this construct, everything is done yourself. So therefore, you're the one that takes accountability at the end of the day, not somebody else. You're not a student who's going to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just a student. I made a mistake. Sorry. No. You make a mistake, you own up to it. Yeah, I made a mistake. I'm going to stop and correct. I... I've done it multiple times on this channel in the public. It takes a cultivation of humility to do things like that. You have to let go of things like pride and personal feelings and biases and things like that and be able to actually distill it down looking at it through the lens of correct sentence structure. The commander-in-chief of the army, the POW, is a soldier, is the one who wrote the form. POW is instructed. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know what the heck they're going into here. If you can truly hold that position to a bother in arms, then only God can show you the light. Okay, now they're bringing God into it, which is another step on the continuance of the evidence. If they're in that construct, well, I'm not going to go into that here. Um, the nature of the truth. The truth is the truth. Nature is nature. Correct sentence structure is one and one is one. Void of all assumption, presumption, and modification. And I can definitely see from your conveyances here where you stand in relation to those things. Next comment, with all due respect, the damages your venue would be responsible to settle are in the trillions if your suggested venue isn't prepared to pay out or is lacking the real world ability to pay it out. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so again, this individual is showing more evidence in the continuance of evidence, the chain of evidence, that their closure on correct sentence structure is extremely lacking. In my five or so years of doing this, I have never, ever, ever seen anyone 
get a payment or a settlement or some physical tangible value from a fiction entity using correct sentence structure. The only thing I've seen correct sentence structure do is stop a trespass. That's it. I've never seen anyone get money or get given property or whatever. I've never seen it. I've only seen it stop trespass. So it sounds as though this individual really bought into what Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller was selling back then about being able to do this and that and the third with it when really there is no tangible evidence I've ever seen of that, even secondhand. I will gladly send you the documents that I have and will be honored to have them corrected. I claim universal studentship with good faith. And again, that's another piece of evidence in the continuance of the evidence as to why things turned out the way they did for Stephen. He's not a master. He's subordinating himself to a system. And that can create some very interesting and perhaps not all the time positive outcomes. As to the feelings, I never mentioned argument from feelings. I would feel bad to have your position. That is all, and that is a fact. No, if you go back to the last comment, you can tell that there was some sort of feeling that was provoked in him because of all the wild assumptions he was making about POWs and children and things like that. It is a fact that everything I said is true by its nature. Well, it's a fact because you're claiming it to be a fact. It may be a fact for you. It is not a fact for me because you have provided no certification or evidence of any of your story. The same with RJG has never really provided any physical evidence that he did what he did in any foreign vessel in dry dock anywhere. He says there's video evidence, but I've never seen it. And if David Wynn Miller and RJG have even a quarter of the power that they claim to have, you would think they could release a measly little video. It is a fact I, as a man, would never say, say what I said I wouldn't say. Okay? I do think I misread your statement, and I'm glad you clarified. I mentioned before I am aware that I get worked up when dealing with this issue. So, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Up here, they said, uh, I do not present an argument based on feelings. They say, as to the feelings, I never mentioned argument from feelings. And then down here, they say, I get worked up when dealing with this issue. So they do get all up in their feelings, although they're saying they don't. They do. They're clearly contradicting themselves here. Thank you for the respect and forum which wish to discuss this topic. I view this topic on par with my identity, second only to my faith of such this is entangled. I'm not even going to try to decipher that one. And the final comment. I conditionally accept your closer to this conversation. I have every intent to email you. I understood what you meant and your offer. I was saying that your value to your venue is equal to what you offered, which is the tutorship. I only expect the obligation to those who claim to be able to achieve its payout. For example, Russell, Mark, or Greaves. I guess Russell and Mark are sad. They're grieving. If they are going to claim the court or flag or overseer and enforcer of contracts. Hmm. <laughs> I did not mean to imply your venue should take that obligation. Oh, I didn't think that you were implying that at all. Um, because I know what my obligation is, and that is to teach correct sentence structure on this channel, which I do in over 500 videos. I was responding to you and others to the fullest I could under the idea this is an educational conversation because there could be others who walk my path and may need the same ideas in front of them. You have made it clear that I've reached your level of comfort comfortably. Well, actually, quite the contrary, Stephen. I am very comfortable here just having some coffee and sharing some correct sentence structure psychology with those who are watching this video right now in how to, number one, vet someone's character or their condition of mind, how they think, where they're at psychologically in relation to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and then by extension, 
being able to gauge exactly where their correct set instruction knowledge level is based upon these things that they share, which you've been sharing, which I am using for a knowledge cultivation tool. Has nothing to do with comfortably. I'm always usually very comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you for your time, words, and knowledge. I plan on emailing you. I apologize for any words that may have offended anyone. This is to include the conditional acceptance. Well, speaking for myself, um, it's very hard to offend me. Very, very hard. Uh, five years on YouTube and a lifetime experience of a very interesting um, existence have taught me not to take anything personal at all. Or, again, takes a lot to get me offended. So, no worries there. If anyone else was offended, well, then <laughs> they're probably in the wrong place if they want to learn about facts and correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And to Stephen out there, I leave it to you. If you want to move forward, if you're serious about getting answers and getting closure on this grammar and to hear more expansion of what I'm saying, email me at the email address and I'll send you uh, some scheduled possibilities for a consult. And the same goes for anyone else out there who wants to learn this grammar. Go ahead and email me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult. Uh, make sure your audio and video is working and please use your correct name. You know who I am. You know my name. I just ask the same consideration from you. And of course, there's the memberships. If you can click the join button at the bottom of this video, you'll see two tiers. Uh, the second tier, loyalists and contributors have access to content not available to the public. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or critiques, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.